Today we're going to continue our discussion on how to write complete molecular reactions, complete ionic reactions, and finally net ionic reactions. For that we're going to look at two common examples. We're going to look at an example of adding vinegar to baking soda, and then we're going to look at an example of adding hydrobromic acid to a baking soda solution. So let's begin. So we've got common baking soda and common vinegar. The question is a, a solution of solid baking soda, which is, has a formula of sodium hydrogen carbonate, is added to a solution of vinegar, also known as acetic acid. For this reaction, we want to write three things. First, write the complete molecular equation. Next, write the balanced net ionic equation. And then finally, write the net ionic equation. So let's begin. First, hopefully you remember the complete molecular equation. You just simply write the formulas. So the formula for sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium is plus one, carbonate bicarbonate is minus one, is NaHCO3. This formula for vinegar is H-C2H3O2 minus. So those are our reactants. Anytime you add an acid to a carbonate, be it solid or aqueous, you're going to produce carbon dioxide and water. So it's important to think about this right here is producing carbon dioxide and water when you add acid to it. So the products for that are going to be carbon dioxide and water and then the sodium is going to combine with the acetate and make sodium acetate. So the products of this reaction are sodium acetate which is aqueous, all acetates are soluble, all family of 1A is soluble, water and carbon dioxide. So that's complete molecular equation. Next, we want to write the complete ionic equation. For that, you split up anything that's aqueous. Now, we see, we see here that sodium hydrogen carbonate is solid, so this would not be split up. Vinegar is aqueous. Now, the issue with vinegar is vinegar is a weak acid. True, the, the acetic acid did dissolve in water, but it didn't ionize. It didn't split up into ions of protons and acetate ions. So this would not be split up. You do not split up acetic acid because it's a weak acid. You only split up, split up strong acids. But, however, we see over here sodium acetate is aqueous. That's family 1A. That's completely soluble. That will be split up. We see water is liquid. That would not be split up. And we see carbon dioxide is gas. That would not be split up. So, the reactants look exactly the same. Nothing is split up because baking soda is solid and acetic acid is a weak acid. On the product side, however, we will uh, we want to split up the sodium acetate. Now I didn't do that, so let's do that right now. So what we're going to do is you should have sodium with a positive, and that should be a superscript, and split that up, and that should be plus the acetate, which is negative. So these should be written as two separate things. And then you have water and carbon dioxide. And so next we want to write the complete ionic reaction. Now for the complete ionic reaction, what you want to do is remove anything that's a spectator ion. Spectator ion would be anything that's aqueous as an ion on both sides of the reaction. Now we see here that we have sodium as an ion on one side, but it's as a solid on the other, so that would not be removed. We also see that acetate is negative as an ion here, but it's not on the reactant side, so that would not be removed. For this one, the net ionic reaction looks exactly the same as a complete ionic reaction. There's no difference because there are no spectator ions. So anytime you're, you do not have any spectator ions, your complete ionic reaction would look exactly the same as a net ionic reaction. You may also notice that the reaction is balanced. We have one sodium, one sodium, one uh, hydrogen here, one hydrogen here that gives us two hydrogens for water. We have a carbonate, a carbon goes to the one carbon there. We have three oxygens, and then there is one oxygen in the water and two oxygens in the carbon dioxide, so that gives us three. And then we have one acetate here, one acetate here. Now notice there's a neutral charge here because neither one of these are charged, so the net charge is zero. Then if you add up a positive one and a negative one, the net charge on the product side is also zero. So it is balanced for atom and charge. So let's do one more example. Now this time, we're, instead of adding vinegar to the baking soda, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to, instead of, um, we're going to add, it, where it says solid, what we're going to do is make this a baking soda solution. So we're going to add a baking soda solution to a solution of hydrobromic acid. So instead of a solid, we're going to dissolve that in water. So we want to do the same thing. We're going to write a complete molecular equation, a complete 
net ionic, a complete ionic re equation, and then a balanced net ionic reaction. So let's begin. So first, the complete molecular equation. The first thing we'll do is we have a sodium hydrogen carbonate is aqueous. It's not a solid this time. And then we have hydrobromic acid, which is aqueous as well. So we have two aqueous things to start with. And then the products are similar. We have hydro, hydrogen bromide is our salt. We have water and carbon dioxide. Now, what's next we want to write for this, the complete ionic reaction. Now, this is going to look quite a bit different because what happens, this is aqueous instead of a solid, the baking soda. So that means you're going to split this up into a sodium ion and a bicarbonate ion. And then we have a strong acid here, so this will be split up as well. This will be split up into a proton and a bromide ion. On the product side, sodium bromide is completely soluble, so this will be split up as well. Water is a liquid, carbon dioxide is a gas, so neither one of these substances will be split. So the complete ionic reaction would look like this. The reactions would be, first of all, everything is split up. The sodium is split up from the bicarbonate, the proton is split up from the bromide. And the, so those are the ions for the complete ionic reaction on the reactant side. On the product side, like we said, the only thing we're going to split up is the sodium bromide. And so we see the sodium and bromide are split up. And so this one is much longer. A lot of things that are separated. Now for the net ionic reaction, we're going to remove any spectator ions. So first, let's look and see if we see any spectator ions. A spectator ion would be anything that's aqueous on the reactant side and also aqueous on the product side. Hopefully you notice too. There is one which is a sodium ion, so we can cancel that out because it's aqueous on both sides. And then also we have the bromide ion because that's aqueous on both sides. So what's left is a net ionic reaction. We have the bicarbonate added to the acid and we have water and carbon dioxide produced. And so the net ionic reaction is water plus bicarbonate. I'm sorry, a proton plus bicarbonate gives you water and carbon dioxide. So those are two great examples of how to write reactions for two different, uh, a weak acid and a strong acid, a solid and an aqueous solution. So let me know if you have any questions. That will be it.